reach out tends to be a blessing. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. This 40 days of fast and prayer, come and prepare our hearts by gathering together at our weekly prayer altars. For further information, visit our website and the NECF devotional booklet that will be available for download to guide you through your fast and prayer season. Together, let's return our hearts to God and come to know Him. We all have that person in our lives, that neighbor we pass by daily, that coworker we see five days a week, those friends we catch up with, people we wish would know and experience the love of Jesus. It takes great faith, with time, effort, vulnerability, and sacrifice to reach out to them. What greater opportunity than exercising your faith at our very own SIBKL Alpha. Now is the time to invite your friends for our upcoming Alpha and introduce the love of Christ to them. Accomplish is a community of business owners and professionals. We come together on a regular basis to journey life together and grow together. If you want to move from here to there, I dare you to really look at your comfort zone and think about what is happening in our daily life. Your people will see the value that we build, even accepted properly by your partners. Our blended learning journey will give you three experiences. A learning personal to you at your own pace, 
with direct access to the speakers. Interaction with other conference participants in an online community on the social platform in the app. And finally, at our Saturdays together, you will hear from our keynote speaker and interact within your small groups. Come, join us at this True Success Conference today. Come on church, I want to invite you to sing along with me this song over our country and also over our homes. Come on now. Our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your touch and go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people. And I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. This 40 days of fast and prayer, come and prepare our hearts by gathering together at our weekly prayer altars. For further information, visit our website and the NECF devotional booklet that will be available for download to guide you through your fast and prayer season. Together, let's return our hearts to God and come to know Him. We all have that person in our lives, that neighbor we pass by daily, that coworker we see five days a week, those friends we catch up with, People we wish would know and experience the love of Jesus. It takes great faith, with time, effort, vulnerability, and sacrifice to reach out to them. What greater opportunity than exercising your faith at our very own SIBK Alpha? Now is the time to invite your friends for our upcoming Alpha and introduce the love of Christ to them. Accomplish is a community of business owners and professionals. We come together on a regular basis to journey life together and grow together. If you want to move from here to there, I dare you to really look at your comfort zone and think about what is happening in our daily life. Where people will see the value that we build, even accepted properly by your partners. Our blended learning journey will give you three experiences. A learning personal to you at your own pace with direct access to the speakers. Interaction with other conference participants in an online community on the It's time for us to come together as the body of Christ to call upon the Lord. 
Join us for the Medeka Day 24-hour prayer with speakers Bishop Ong Sit Myung and Dr. John Mulindi. And let's stand in the gap for our beloved nation. Come one, come all for a fun and joyous time. The Children's Ministry will be having the Medeka celebrations. So bring your kids and let's celebrate our wonderful nation together. Being a man in today's world is easier than ever before. Stress, financial worry, flexibility, marriage, struggle, depression, uncertainty, constant diving interest. All right, maybe it's not that easy. Calling all men! We have a special camp ready for you. A camp aimed to rejuvenate your soul. It's time to... Reboot. Recharge. Renew. We're going to have fun game, fellowship, food, and more. Bro. What? I'm hungry again. And most importantly, work. It'll be held at Harvest Haven. Not heaven, but close. A beautiful, serene place without the interruption of the outside world. The perfect place to reboot, recharge, renew. On top of it all, you men will be having the trip of your lives. I can contain all my excitement within this short promo. It's time for you to unpack the surprises for yourself. Sign up now. <laughs> Our online tuition program is looking for more volunteers. If you are able to help from a technical standpoint or tutor for English and maths, do consider joining us. Let's empower and enrich the rural communities together. For more information, visit the link on the screen. Are you keen to grow more in your understanding of God's Word? Then join us for our upcoming Christian Doctrine Module, a series of four lessons on the basis of the Christian faith. For further details, visit the link on the screen. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hello everyone, good morning. And for those of you who are just joining us, we'd like to welcome you to our third service, our 11 a.m. service here in SIBKL. My name is Joel and I'm one of the pastors in Workplace at the River and SIBKL Church Plant. And I'd like to welcome anyone here who is new to us. If you're visiting, why don't you give me a wave? Give me a, there's a couple of people there and all the way at the back. Welcome, thank you for coming and joining us today. A couple of people in front. You know what, at the end of the service, don't run off. We've got a special gift for you. So if you can go just outside and there's a special connect counter where they'll give you a gift or you can go even downstairs and there's special refreshments for all our guests, all our visitors today. And if you're here joining us online and you are watching this to, uh, right now today, I want to encourage you to just drop a line in the chat so that our team can get in touch with you and say hi, thank you for joining us. You know, we'd love to connect with you. So today we are very blessed because we've got a guest speaker. He's none other than Pastor Paul Ang. Um, he is the founder of Paul Ang Global Vision. Yeah, he's giving us a wave right here. And in fact, earlier at the second service, his wife, Pastor Christina, spoke. So if you're here for second and third services, you are in for a treat. I was just talking to someone just now who uh, attends the service online, second service, and then the third service. 
well, He's going to be blessed, right? And we are all going to be blessed. Well, you know, we are all dressed in Malaysian attire, right? So, we love our nation, Malaysia. How many of you love Malaysia? Yeah? Let me ask another question. How many of you love food? Yeah? Last question, I promise. How many of you love Jesus? All right, so if you love food and if you love Jesus, you can run an Alpha course because you can share Jesus over food to your friends. All right, and we are going to run an Alpha session just on the 18th of September. It's coming up soon. We've not been able to have it physically for a long time, but now we're going to restart, resume Alpha on the 18th of September. And there's a booth right outside. So if you'd like to sign up for yourself or for your friend, or even pay it forward for someone that you'd like to invite, go ahead and sign up at the booth outside. You know, our volunteers would love to sign you up there. And talking about prayer, talking about evangelizing, um, we normally have a 24-7 prayer altar. But this year, this year, um, the 24-7 prayer altar is going to be um, anchored by the AOG churches. It's going to be online over Zoom. So just log on at the link on screen from, the, from 30th August at 8 p.m. for 24 hours. But you know what? Right now, we are going to be praying for all of us, right? So why don't I invite you to rise to your feet even as we pray together. Amen. Father God, we want to thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you, God, that this is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I thank you, God, for every single person who is here physically as well as those who are joining us online. Lord, I ask that your presence would just fill this place and, Lord, that you would be in our midst. Lord, even as we praise you and sing worship unto your name, Lord, won't you come down touch us, minister to us, and see us where we are at, Lord. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, church, in Genesis 1-1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and the Spirit was hovering over the water. So today, today, three days from Medeca, we are going to worship God like never before. We're going to pray and we're going to ask God that His Spirit will come and hover over us, our families and our nation. We're going to ask His Spirit to come and rest upon us and move, move in us, move in our nation. Amen. And to do that, we're going to sing a new song, a song that will say, come and rest on us. All right. I'm going to teach you the song right now as the Spirit is moving. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest, come down, chorus, calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Church, you've got it. Let's do this from the top, all right? Let's ask God to come and rest upon us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. When you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. 
now we're gonna sing for fire and wind to come and do it again revival come fire and wind come and do it again open up the gates that heaven on in come rest on us come rest on fire and wind fire and wind You make my heart come when you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Oh, you feel us, Lord. Oh, you feel us, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, come and feel us. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come rest on us. Holy Spirit, come rest. You 
you're all we want. You're all we want. Come and rest upon us. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Yes, Lord, you're all we want. You're all we want. Come and rest upon your people. Come and rest upon your children. Come and rest upon your priesthood, Lord. Come and move, come and move. Come and move in the spirit. Oh, we're ready for you to move. Oh, we're ready for more of you. Come and move, Lord. Oh, come and move, Lord. Come and move, Lord. Come and blow on true. Come and blow. Come and blow on true. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you come and you move in this place. So come and blow. breakthroughs in this place he wants to release healing in this place if there is any of you with a migraine with a sharp migraine that comes and goes and you've been having this for a couple of months now if that is you raise your hands right now I feel right now feet there's some of you with feet your feet hurts every time you walk too long or if you wear something that's not right, your feet hurts. It could be a flat foot thing. It could be something else. And I feel bones, joints, joints, arthritis. Right now, if that is any of you, raise your hands. Raise your hands. The Spirit of God is here. Oh, we ask, Lord Jesus, let your healing power come to this place. Come and move in this place. We ask, Lord. We ask, Lord, for restoration and healing to come upon your people right now. Migrate, be gone in Jesus' name. Migrate, be gone. Pain, be gone. Discomfort, be gone. Feet pain, be gone right now in Jesus' name. Feet, be gone. Feet pain, be gone right now in Jesus' name. Arthritis, joints pain, be gone right now in Jesus' name. Let the healing power of God come. Come and move in this place. He's moving in this place. If you are, if you have a pain, put it upon your body that hurts right now, the part that hurts right now. God wants to release the healing right now. God wants to release the healing. Release healing. Release. Release. Be released in this place. Be released in this place. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Be released. Freedom be released right now in Jesus' name. God wants to release joy and peace. Joy and peace in this place. If you're going through anxiety, God wants to release joy and He wants to release peace. Would you receive it from God? Would you receive it from God as we sing this? 
accept the freedom that is imparting right now.
poured our life and all offered to you. Jesus, Jesus, my offering, all my ambitions. A sacrifice, oh, just to bless you. I just wanna move your heart. It's all I wanna do. I just wanna stand in awe and pour my love on you, no matter how much. The for our nation we give us your heart for our nation for Malaysia Lord we ask God that you turn Malaysia back to you that you turn her people back to you Lord we ask Lord Jesus come Lord give us a heart for Malaysia give us a heart for Malaysia Lord Jesus Stand in awe and pour my love 
upon you no matter how much the cost I freely give it all to you all to you you know the song says I want to stand here and pour my love to you you know I see this picture of when you have a newborn baby or when you know you, you, you see a baby especially when it's yours and you just feel like you love the baby so much almost like nothing you can do that you can pour more love on the baby you know and I feel right now you know this weekend um, we want to have a nation focus because it's Merdeka in a few days can we ask God to right now enable us to pour our love on Malaysia right now as people of Malaysia, as people living in this nation? You know, this week, you might have said a lot of things about Malaysia or, or um, if you haven't been joining the conversations of what has happening in Malaysia, I want you to think of an area um, that you have complained about Malaysia and because just now I felt it was so prophetic when Pastor Aaron was just you know just declaring healing over the congregation I felt God saying to me Malaysia needs healing and I feel whatever area that you have spoken about Malaysia this week especially because so many things are happening can I ask you to just put it in your hands, all this area, or if you haven't talked about Malaysia because you don't know what's happening, it's okay. Whatever you have complained about the, this nation, something that you didn't like about it or, or an area, I want you to right now, just put this as a symbolic act, put it in your hands right now and lift it to God and say, God, heal this land. Heal this nation, this people group, these impossibilities. Lord, we have talked so much about it this week. Jesus, heal this land. That very area that you have talked about. Give it to God. Don't just give it. Declare healing over that area. And right now, I just feel God wanting you to pour your love. I know, it's impossible. We're talking about court case, we're talking about whatever it is. I just feel God saying, you as the Rakyat. God already loves Malaysia. He wants you to pour your love over this very area that you have talked about. within you pour out that love on Malaysia Hiarabasante Pura Babalabasia Rababalabasia Hiarababalabasante To a fragrance. Is it alive in the daytime? Then here I give my vows. Is it a song I sing? Is every melody? Just tell me what moves you. Just tell me what moves you. Let's not offer a stench. Is it a fragrance? Let's offer fragrance to God right now. Then I pour my own. Is it alive later? Then here I give my vows. Is it a song that I sing? Here's every melody. Just tell me what moves you. Just tell me what moves you. 
Yes, Lord Jesus, I just feel you are renovating our hearts. You are renovating, you're circumcising our minds. Because Lord Jesus, this nation is a nation that you love. This nation is part of your prophetic destiny. Lord Jesus, this nation is a revival nation. Amen. This nation has encountered an outpouring of the Spirit. But Lord Jesus, this nation needs healing. And here am I. Here we are, Lord Jesus. We stand as Rakyat of Malaysia before you right now. Lord, we want to take hold of this land that you have given us, the good, the bad, the ugly. Lord, it's like a family that you've given us. We don't disengage and reject certain parts. Lord, you see some of us, we have had broken families and we don't even know how to love our families. But right now, Lord Jesus, you are renovating our hearts. You're renovating our minds. When we align our purposes to a God purpose, Lord, I know you are taking care of our household when we step into that God prophetic destiny for our nation. Holy Spirit, let it be a fragrance that rises up to you. Jesus, Jesus, we love you, Lord Jesus. Can I just get all of us right now to pray for our nation? Can we, you know, I just feel God is doing something so powerful. Can you just declare life over Malaysia right now? Declare a blessing over Malaysia right now, right at the very climate of what Malaysia is going through right now. It is in this atmosphere that we just want to declare God's healing over this place. Come on, can we all just rise up in prayer? Let your prayers just utter a simple prayer to God right now, everyone in this place. I feel that it's just a strong presence of God and let's go deeper into this atmosphere. Yes, Lord Jesus, we want to lift up Malaysia into your mighty hands. This Merdeka, Lord Jesus, this Merdeka, we want to pray that you would break the chains that holds this nation back. Lord Jesus, Lord, we pray that this Merdeka, this year, that your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, would just go to and fro in this land and see the people of God rising up to take hold of something for this nation. Lord, let the people of God rise up to love this nation. Let our love pour out into this nation. Lord, we ask that you will take hold of every one of our lives right now. Lord, we stand in representation of the work that we have, the race that we we are and Lord Jesus the families that we have the community the housing area and Lord we say you take it and make it a fragrant offering ascending to heaven thank you Jesus thank you Lord that you've called us for such a time as this we love you Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus I pray amen 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 amen, amen. amen. hallelujah praise God all right, the please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, it's true, you know. Malaysia is not any other country. Not only the fact that every country is unique. Malaysia is distinctive in the sense that we have experienced two genuine revivals in SIB, you know, in East Malaysia. And we want to believe that the Golombang Yang Katiga, the third wave, will come. It is my prayer, Lord, make it happen in my lifetime. That the third wave of revival 
will come once again from the east and you will sweep to Sabah, Sarawak and this time you will come to Samanjong. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe it? Come on, let's give God a good clap offering. The revival is in the air. That notwithstanding whatever happened politically, we can be discouraged. But as I said in the second service, you know, darkness will always be dark. But the key is never curse the darkness. Just introduce the light. Amen. Just introduce the light, the truth. But all the lies and everything they say, they will always tell lies. But all we need to do is speak truth. Speak truth in the situation. Speak life in the situation. Speak light in the situation. Don't curse the darkness. Darkness will always be dark. All we need to do is introduce the light. Darkness will go. Amen. And the light, we have the light. The church is the beacon of hope. The church is the beacon of light. So we need to pray even more in the next half of 40 days. All right. Those of you who are fasting and praying, all right, we need to fast. We need to pray and uphold our nation. To God in prayer because God can work a miracle. Amen. And our nation can be delivered, will be delivered. Amen. Come on, let's give our clap offering again. Come on. You just don't just clap and don't believe it. You have to believe it that we need to pray. Only God can turn the nation around. So in the next, next 20, 20 days, we are now on the 22nd day of 40 days of fast and prayer. More than ever before, we need to pray and uphold our nation in prayer. Hallelujah. And introduce our speaker for today. We had a wonderful service in the second service morning when Pastor Christina Ann spoke. All right. And now uh, Pastor Paul Ang is going to share the word with us. And I, I know Pastor Paul and Christina for many, many more, many, many years now, maybe 30 to 40 years. We know each other, you know, and have a good relationship with them. We are good friends. And I'm very proud that we have a true prophet. Watan Malaysia from Malaysia and has become a let's give up for them. They have a they have a global ministry as they go around the world, even in the office of a prophet. And I know that Paul has a wonderful prophetic word for every one of us, both here as well as on site. Uh, and they have one son called Asher who's doing very well. And praise the Lord. Love, let's give a clap offering. Oh, by incidentally, they have books outside to sell. All right, go and get their books as well. All right. Let's welcome Pastor Paul Ang on the stage. Pastor Paul, whoa! Thank you so much, Pastor Chu. You know, Pastor Chu, you're going to be an Abraham in Malaysia, the father of faith and revival. Maybe we should address you, Father Abraham, for Malaysia. Bapa Malaysia Rohani, spiritual father for Malaysia. Hallelujah. Well, God brought me here this morning because there is a word of the Lord for you. I got up yesterday morning with a scripture ringing in my mind. And it's found in Proverbs 25, 25. Just like cold water to a weary soul. Just like cold water to a weary soul in a hot summer afternoon, so is good news from a far country. There is good news coming to Malaysia, to your life, to the church, and to everyone listening in this message this morning. If you believe, shout Amen. I said there is a good news coming. You have heard bad news the last three years, the last 30 years. But this morning, God sent me here for somebody here. Don't despair. Don't give up. There is good news even for Malaysia. The Rose of Sharon is a flower called hibiscus, or hibiscus is called Rose of Sharon, just in case you don't know. Nothing just happened in life in our nation. Whoever was prompted to pick hibiscus as the symbol of Malaysia, Singapore pick orchid, Malaysia pick hibiscus. Now, there are hundreds, probably thousands of flowers you could have picked from. 
Why hibiscus? The person who selected it, was it a coincident? Or was it God's incident? Now, this morning, God gave me a very amazing prophecy. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the big rose of Sharon is going to come and see the rose, the small rose of Sharon in Malaysia. In other words, the Kairos time of Malaysia is around the corner. It's a time of fulfillment of the prophetic destiny that God has for Malaysia. Do you believe? Shout Amen. Recently, I had an encounter, uh, uh, an experience, I believe it's a sign from God that He is with us in Malaysia. I sent my car for a checkup, which I normally do before I go for an a, a outstation trip. And I know this mechanic for more than 20 years. We are good friends. And that morning when I sent the car, it was just opened the shop and it was the first day. So as usual, he asked me where I'm going. I said, I'm going out station. He says, hey, this is not a good time to travel. The, the cases of COVID is still high. I said, well, my God protects me. So don't worry, not time to die. You won't die. I'm 61, by the way, so healthy. And he checked and he opened up the bonnet and I noticed he kept on looking into my car. I said, I said, why are you looking into my car? Is there somebody? So I peep, there's nobody. So he quickly finished and he chased me. I said, that's very unusual. Usually there's no customers. We'll talk until the cow comes home. And now he's chasing me. He says, go, go, go. I said, why? He says, there is a ghost. There is somebody seated in the car. You see, my hair is standing. He said, go, go, quick, quick, quick. For, for him, a Chinese is sway, you know, is pantang, is, is a guaya, guaya. I said, hey, relax, friend, relax. This is not guaya, this is not ghost. This is my angel. So I got into the car. I said, I looked at the back and said, hi, angel. Blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. About a week later, I went back to see him to ask more questions. Hey, I said that day when you saw that man inside, are you sure you, you, didn't, you didn't take drugs or alcohol in the morning, that morning that you, you were dizzy? I said, can you please describe me the man that you saw in the car? He says, well, he has white hair. He's, he's wearing a robe. He, he was a very stern. His face looks, looks uh, very familiar. He looks like a Malay man. Wow, Malay angel, Malaysian angels. There is hope, church. There is hope. Give Jesus a wonderful clap offering. I'm going to share you a song that God gave me, a prophetic song that the Lord gave me. You see, when Malaysia was going through a very difficult stage, I asked the Lord for a song that will be prophetic and there will be a point of focus where we can release our faith and our hope. All right, enjoy this song. And this song is also found in, in our CD here, which you can get a copy. Siapa cepat, dia dapat, very limited. Actually, it's already out of stock, but I just saw there's quite a few copies left. And in that song afterwards, you see from the YouTube, you'll see the hibiscus flower. So, so pay attention. Catch the hibiscus flower, all right? It's prophetic. Thank you, worship team. Uh, thank you, media. Just put that song on.
Truly, God will bless Malaysia and His glory will be seen through our land. Amen. Your prayers are not wasted. Your fasting are not wasted. I've been praying for Malaysia for the last 42 years. How can God not answer our prayers and your prayers? Amen. Give Jesus a wonderful clap. There is hope. This is my message this morning. Turn to your neighbour and say, there is hope. Now, come with me to the book of Job. And if you can see the screen, we can read together. Alright, can we all read together? One, two, three. For there is hope for a tree. It is cut down that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease, though its roots may grow old in the earth, and its stem may die in the ground. Yet, at the scent of water, you will bud and bring forth branches like a tree, like a plant. Now, this scripture is taken from Job. It was Job's declaration. It was a prophetic word. What do you mean by that? Now, Job, as you know, the background, he, his ten children died in one day. Ayo. I don't know how anybody can take that. His ten children died in one day. Secondly, his well was wiped up overnight. Share market went bizarre, bankrupt. His livestock, everything gone. Bankrupt overnight. Money gone, children gone. And then health. His health was affected. The whole body was full of boils. Now, can you imagine what to live for? Health gone, children gone, and money gone. That's all we live for, right? Chinese and Indians and Malays and... Americans, that's all we live for, isn't it? Our children, our wealth, our health. What hope? The wife comes along and says, Job, why don't you curse God and die? No, don't, don't judge her, don't blame her. She said, Job says, I'll not curse God and die. I'll worship God and live. I'll worship God and live. Job 1.20, the Bible says, Job raised his hand, blessed the Lord and worshiped God. Excuse me, you mean you can worship God when your children come back with straight F's? I know, you get straight A's. You mean you can worship God when something says you've got two months to live? You mean you can worship God when things don't work your way? Hey, we worship God not because of the blessing, not because of the scholarship, not because of Breakthroughs. We worship God because He is worthy of our praise and worship. Amen. We worship Him at the valley of tears, at the mountain of victory and glory. We worship Him because He is the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. He alone is worthy. Amen. But that's not the end of the story. Job declared, okay, no hope. 
like a tree that is cut down, just a stump left, yet at the scent of the water, new life begin. There is hope in the hopeless situation. Don't give up. There's hope. Many years ago, I was praying for my mother's salvation. And for more than 20 years, I prayed for my mother's salvation. I did everything under the sun that I knew. I brought preachers, I fast, I prayed, I witnessed to her. I tell her everything, but nothing moves her. She said, I'll live and die, worshipping my idols. And above all, she had so many emotional baggages. She was a, she was a given to at birth, so she, she grew up with the orphan spirit. And Anyway, I'm not going to do that detail, but I honestly give up on her. I'll be traveling around the world and see people get saved by my own mom. So impossible. No hope on my piece of paper right off. Tak ada harapan untuk keselamatan ibu saya. But God was Gracious, I know mean, oh God is so gracious and long-suffering. He loves me. He loves my mom. So one day, the Lord spoke to me. Your mom's time is getting short. I knew what the Lord meant. I started to pray for her. I started to pray earnestly for her. I said, Lord, out of desperation, I pray this prayer. Lord, even at a dead bed, give her a chance to hear the gospel. I was surprised hearing myself praying that prayer because at that point she was healthy she was going about walking and shortly after that she was totally bedridden she was unwell and what was so amazing is my parents' house is about 200 meters from the church that I grew up and I got saved Assembly of God glad tidings and God touched two ladies a hairdresser and a nurse that every Sunday afternoon I don't know how they knew about my mom condition they will come and visit my mom. They will cook porridge. They will cut her hair, massage her. Just basically show the love of Jesus. Two weeks before my mom passed away, she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. There is hope in difficult and hopeless situation. This is a testimony. Many years ago, I was preaching in SIB like this Sunday. This family, this girl rather, Grew up the only child in the family. Her father was a self-made businessman. Successful, rich, self-made, brilliant. And very hard man. For 28 years, the daughter said, he had never seen the father cry even once. Even when his father, he, I mean, the girl's father's mother, which is her, her grandmother, died. The father didn't even cry when his mother died. Such a man, isn't it? So, when she got born again, she began to pray for her parents' salvation, began to invite the father to go to church with her, and she attends SIB. So every Sunday, she would persuade the father. The mother kind of agreed if the father goes. So, Every Sunday, she would try and persuade, Dad, why don't you come with me to church? And the dad says, Oh, I, I don't need God. I don't need church. I'm, I'm okay. I'm multi-millionaire, successful. When she turned 28, and she had one last Sunday before she get married and immigrate to New Zealand. One last Sunday, and she said, Dad, this is my last Sunday. Give this as my wedding gift. Come to church. Just once, just, just once, you won't see me anymore. I won't ask you anymore. I'm going to New Zealand after I get married. Please. Any, any hard-hearted, stone-made heart of a father will, will give in, right? The only daughter, only child. So reluctantly, he came to church and it was S-I-B-K-L. And that morning, I was preaching. And before I preached, I sang this BM song. There's something about Bahasa. I enjoyed preaching Bahasa. Selagi kamu bernafas, ada harapan. Selagi kamu melihat matahari bersinar, ada harapan. Amen. So that, that morning, I was singing the song. Kaulah 
Tuhanku, Kaulah Rajaku, Kau yang termulia di bumi dan di syurga. Ku sembah Kau Tuhan. It was just a very simple song. What was amazing as we all worship that simple song, the daughter turned and shocked of her life. 28 years, never seen the father cry once. And now the father was touched, was weeping and crying like a baby. That Sunday, the father came and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Six months after she got married, she left for New Zealand. The father was diagnosed with lung cancer. The doctor gave maximum three months. On her dying moment, the daughter flew back to see the father for the last time. It was a very intimate moment between daughter and father at the deathbed. And she didn't know what to say. She didn't know what to do. She started to sing this song, Kaula Tuhan Ku. As she sang, the father just lifted up his hand, hardly could do it by this time, was skin and bone, looked towards heaven and gone to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a wonderful clap offering. You know, I said Pastor Chu is a father, a spiritual father of Malaysia because God has used this church to impact Malaysia. And more than that, I believe you're going to host the revival, the move of God in this land. You know, no church, listen to this, no church, no English church in Malaysia have ever impacted Sabah, Sarawak except SIB. Think for a moment. Well, there is hope, my church, my friend, there is hope. Now, next point, faith and hope are twins. You cannot give up hope because faith must anchor on hope. Hope is something that will support faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. As long as you hold on to hope, you will see the breakthrough. You must hold on to hope because hope will cause your faith to be released. As a preacher, I meet all kinds of people who go through all kinds of situations. I was preaching overseas and I met this Chinese couple. Have only one child, only one daughter. All their hopes and dreams are only on one child. Sounds very familiar. Now, mind, you don't understand. I just told my wife yesterday, I said, thank God I only have one son. I don't know I can take more than one. My parents had 10. Oh, she has so much grace. Anyway, this couple came to me in the meeting. The mother, the wife was telling with tears running down her eyes. She said, all my hope was on her. And one day she came back home and she said, I married a Muslim man. She was brought up in a Christian church. Go to church. The mother said, the wife said, I was so broken. My heart was so broken. I felt like committing suicide. Pastor, what should I do? I said, dear, I, I got no answer. I'm not God. But I can tell you something. Don't give up hope. I took out my CD and I said, just do something what you can and God will do what you cannot. Just take my CD, because this CD is very special. Not because we did it, but I tell you, this CD will not only help you to worship, but help you to pray. I said, take this CD to your daughter's room. Play, worship God, and pray. I I, I don't have the answer, but I told her one little advice. Don't cut off from your son-in-law. If you do, you'll lose your daughter. That's what I told her. I said, God, I don't know how God... Would do it. I'm not God. I cannot speak on behalf of Him unless God gave me a word. And I got no word. And I felt so sorry for them. What happened was they trusted, they prayed, they sought God. Two years passed. Two and a half years passed. Suddenly one day I received a text. 
the son-in-law had an encounter with Jesus. He accepted the Lord. Parents and the son-in-law and the daughter came for my conference and I had the privilege to lay my hand on this daughter and son-in-law and bless them. Say there is hope. Say there is hope. Romans 4, the story about Abraham. Time passes quickly. I wish it stopped. <laughs> anyway, it's all right. I take a little bit of more time. Today is special because the Spirit of God is going to move. You're going to be so blessed. Now, here's a story about Abraham. Hebrews 4, 17 and 18. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of whom, whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Also contrary to hope in hope belief, so that he become the father of many nations according to what was spoken. Alright, the background of the story. At this time, Abraham was 99. When he received the promise he's going to be a father of nations, he was 75. At 75, Sarah, the wife, was barren for whatever reason. That's already bad enough. Now, at 99, Abraham, the wife already menopause. That means to top die. Any guy near here? To make things bad, Abraham at 99 cannot perform, which means uh, probably they didn't have access to Viagra and Tonkat Ali. If you don't know those both items, never mind, just leave it. So actually, Abraham needs three miracles. Am I right? Have you heard a menopausal wife gets pregnant? Anyway, Sarah got pregnant. The Bible used the word in a message when there is no hope. When there was hopelessness. Another translation says against all hope. So, if you look at the natural, the medical, it is so hopeless. And yet, they got a miracle. Hallelujah. You know, I just came back from Sabah. I love Sabah, Sarawak, BM speaking. I'm so glad. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to Penang for a BM conference. Speaking in pure BM together with my wife. Oh, it's so sweet about Bahasa Malaysia. Anyway, we were in Sabah speaking in a Bahasa church. Pastor Alok and his wife, Ifleen, shared an amazing testimony. I cried when I heard that testimony. At three and a half months pregnant, Evelyn, the wife, discovered that she was discharging water. Her am amniotic fluid was coming out. They went to the doctor, the gynae. The gynae was 38 years experience. Look at the situation. Look at the x-ray. There was no water. So, hospitalized for the next two weeks and told the husband there's no hope. The maximum the baby can survive is one week and given beyond that, maybe two weeks, 38 years of experience, sure cannot one. So, Pastor Alok asked the doctor, is the baby still alive? He said, yes. And the doctor encouraged them to abort the baby because there's going to be infection. It's going to affect the mother. The baby will surely die and the mother may also die. That was a very negative, hopeless prognosis of the whole situation. So after two weeks in the hospital, no change. Pastor Alok says, let's go back. I mean, there's no change. There's no medical help. Let's go back. So took the wife back. Every week they will go for checkup. Same Result, same thing, but the baby is still alive. So Michael Alok says, Look, as long as the baby is alive, we will not abort. If it dies, well, there's nothing we can say or do, but if the baby is still alive, we're not going to abort. Three and a half months to seven months, every night, every day, the water will come out. 
And when they took the x-ray, it was like dried up, you know, and the normal one is so beautiful, okay? At seven months of pregnancy, Jesus visited the wife one night. He, she saw the glory, the love. This beautiful face of Jesus came and just gave her a hug and then left without saying a word. The next day, stopped. All the water stopped coming out. From seven months to nine months was a normal, perfect pregnancy. At, at seven months, when they took the x-ray, the water all came back normal. At nine months, normal delivery, normal birth, safe baby, healthy mother. Wow! I thought my son died in a womb at two months was a great miracle. Yes! God still performed miracle. There is hope my friend. Alright, let me quickly give you three points. How to cause your faith to be alive in the midst of hopeless situation. Firstly, Jesus still reigns. Jesus is alive and He still reigns. Amen. As long as Jesus is alive and still reigns, He can perform miracles. He can do whatever. Even though naturally you lose hope. There was a single lady at 55 still hoping to get married. Any single lady here above 50 still longing to get married? She came to my conference, the right conference, and was sharing about the 10 camels in Genesis chapter 24 that brought Rebecca to Isaac. You go back and read the story. And I give them a prophecy in that conference your camel is going to bring your Rebecca. In other words, your investment is going to be prosperous. Your life partner or whoever you're believing or parents you are praying for, your son or daughter's uh, or wedding, the camels are coming. Hallelujah. May this be a prophetic word for you, the camels are coming. So this lady, 53, sat next to Shirley, who is my good friend, laugh. He says, my Arabian night is going to come and marry me. Watch what you speak. A few months after that, she met a 57-year-old medical doctor. Guess what? He got married. Hey, there's hope, my dear friend, no matter what it is. Well, Sarah at 90, still a king interested in her. At 90, 90. Well, when you reach 91, then no more hope. i got no more scriptures to give you. Say, there is hope when Jesus is on the throne. Let me tell you another story. I'm, all my stories are real. Personal, real people, alright? Another couple have three children. This is in Sabah. Something about Sabah. This couple have three children. Actually, they attend SIB Skyline. Anyway, two sons and one daughter. The daughter is the eldest. The wife was serving in the Sunday school. The two sons were in the worship team. Uh, the three, three children, all of them were in the worship team. The father is a businessman. One day, when the daughter turns 21, hell broke loose. She will go out drinking, get drunk at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, stole the father's credit card, the situation was so bad that the mother could not speak to the daughter. They only speak through the father. Now you can imagine how bad the situation is. Same thing, they came to see me. Same thing, I recommend. Take my CD. Hey, it works. Lah. For 30 ringgit or 20 ringgit, it works. I mean, worth it, right? Anyway, it's not the CD. It's Jesus. It's you releasing your hope and your faith. So this couple came and said, help. I said, well, I'm not God, but I told them something interesting. I said, God is a miracle worker, but He's not a magician. What's the difference? A magician, flowers. Zoop, the rabbit. God is a miracle worker, but He's not a magician. In other words, when God performs miracles, there's a time, there's a purpose, there's a plan. God don't simply come around and, and do miracles for women fancy, but 
He responds to faith and hope. He has a purpose and a time, just like there was appointed time for Sarah to give birth to Isaac. There's a perfect time for Malaysia to receive the visitation. Don't give up, all right? So here was this case. I said, take the CD, pray. Go to the daughter's room when she's not in. She's still not married, so she's in. Lay hands on the pillow, the bed, and just pray, pray in tongues, worship God that God would touch her. Guess what? Nothing happened. One year passed by, guess what? Nothing happened. Two years passed by, nothing happened. You see, as long as we don't give up, we will see the breakthrough. Did you hear what I say? As long as we don't give up, we will see the breakthrough. Whether it's believing God for Malaysia, your family's salvation, or healing, or whatever. And after more than three years, persevering in prayer and believing God, one day the daughter came back, says, I want to follow you all to church. For more than three years, she has not followed. She came to church that day. God touched her. She came and gave her life to Jesus. Today, she's a missionary in a foreign country. Turn to your neighbor and say, there is hope. Secondly, miracles still happen. You know, when I talk about miracle, I'm so amazed. When you read the Bible, you can't escape but see the miracle of God. Am I right? Everything God does is miraculous. Water flow out from the rock. Water flow out from the rock. Siawa. Try, try water flow out from the rock or not. But water did. Anyway, too many miracles. But miracles still do happen. Let me share a personal one. Sometime last year, uh, we, went, we go for a walk at about 6, 5.45 in the morning, every morning. So one morning, the last night was a big thunderstorm. And we passed by our house in front. There was a huge Christmas tree. Underneath was full of wild mushrooms. So when my wife saw the mushroom, her eyes grew so big. She loves mushroom. The mother used to do those wild mushrooms. So she came back. She was so excited. She took a big basin and collected all the mushrooms. And she's going to cook stir fry and mushroom soup. So I said, hey, got poison one. Huh? Do you know or not? She said, oh, don't worry, Paul. I know how to test. My mother taught me how to test what is poisonous and what is not. So to make the short story long, she cooked. At about 12 o'clock, she had to her satisfaction. And then she said to me, Paul, don't you want to try some of my mushroom? I said, uh, let me wait and see. If you don't die, then I will try. You see, I realized my mouth is so prophetic. I got to really watch my words many times. It's so prophetic. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I received a text. Can you imagine I received a text message from my wife in the same house? She said, come to the room, come to the toilet. I saw her sitting down on the toilet. She was vomiting and diarrhea at the same time time. For the three hours, she was throwing up and giving out. Anybody had diarrhea before? Don't put up your hand. Well, now it's about five. She's on the bed, on a mattress, and she said this to me, call ambulance. It was so faint. If my wife say call ambulance, you know, huh? it's very critical. Believe me, she's a woman of faith. She got more faith than me. But for some strange reason, I said, hold on first. Let, let me pray first. I lifted up both my hands to heaven. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, just neutralize the poison in the body. I prayed the second prayer. Father, send an angel and bring the healing balm. And I lay hands on her and start praying thanks. As I did, she fell asleep. When she fell asleep, I realized I also ate the mushroom. I jokingly told her if she don't die, I'll eat, but, but I ate. After she left, you know how Eve gave Adam the fruit? Women bring problem, but men suffer. Anyway, then I start checking. You, am I going to have diarrhea, vomiting? Whew. 
queue. I was waiting to go to the toilet. I was waiting to warm it, you know. About 7 o'clock in the evening, my wife got up. Totally miraculous healed. I just realised, thank God I wasn't trained medically. I just realised she could have died. Actually, she could have died because when I touched her, she, she looks like Chinese. She's Indian, right? She looks like Chinese. She was pale. Her body was cold. And I knew life was leaving her. I'm just thinking, if I call ambulance, half an hour, come, half an hour, go, she probably died on the way. Now, let, let me say this disclaimer, alright? Don't do what I did. Unless God really speaks to you. Now, what happened to me, I believe there was a gift of faith. The next question, how come you didn't have vomit and diarrhea? God loves me a little bit more. <laughs> Lastly, simply trust Him. How to keep your foot alive? Just simply trust Him. Now, I told you about Pastor Michael Alok's story. And actually, Pastor Michael Alok sought God. Say, God, what should I do? Should I abort just like the doctor suggested? My wife is in danger. The Lord just asked him one question. Do you trust me? Maybe this morning, God sent me here to ask you this question. Do you trust God? Do you trust God that God can do a miracle? Do you trust God that things can turn around? Do you trust God it's not time to die? You will not die. Amen? A lady in the 60s texted me. She said, I'm in this cancer condition. I knew there was so much fear and anxiety in her. I'm going for an operation. I texted her. I said, don't worry, sister. It's not time for you to go. God has more work for you to do. You will stay and declare the glory of God. She's still alive. One last testimony and I close. Actually, I only exceeded 1 minute 27 seconds. Not bad, huh? Okay, one last story. You want some more? You want some more? Sure. I got a lot of stories, huh? Sure you want? In the year 1992, that's 30 years ago. I'm married for 32 years. I'm only 40. 32 years ago, I was married, but in the year 1992, I was just married two years. I was privileged, honoured to be the candidate of dengue fever. You know dengue fever? Anybody here know somebody died of dengue fever? Can I see your hand? I didn't know how serious I was until I landed in KLGH, the best hospital in the whole world. I was on the third ward. The, the ward was so near the door and, and the fan was so old. I thought if I don't die of dengue, the fan will kill me and drop down. You know, you're just new in the ministry. You don't have private hospital, don't have money to pay. So you landed in GHKL. Every morning and evening, one doctor will come and examine me. And they always ask this standard question, are you bleeding? Why I always ask the question, are you bleeding? Are you bleeding? Every time they thoroughly check me, are you bleeding? I didn't know when the pallet count is so low, you start bleeding through your nose, through your anus, through your whatever. Third morning, I found I was bleeding when I went to the toilet. I said, oh, you, jalados, finish, go on, pochi, pochi. That morning, Strangely, instead of one doctor, four doctors came. Four. They checked me and then they had some mini seminar and they saw this lady, this Indian lady sitting at the corner about three feet away looking intently at this man and looking at the doctors. So one of the doctors went to her, uh, how is this man related to you? She said, uh, he's my husband. It's very unusual for a Chinese man to marry an Indian wife. It's already very rare an Indian man married a Chinese wife. What more the other way? Okay, anyway, the doctor told her, get ready for the worst. Isn't that exciting? Doctors are really exciting, right? They are bearer of bad news. But God sent me here to tell you that I'm a bearer of good news. My feet are anointed for good news. You know, Psalms 139 says, your days 
are returned. Do you know all of your days are returned? All your days are held in His hand. No time to die, you won't die. Or not. Okay, anyway, let me tell my story, finish. That night, I knew I was dying. How do you know you're, you're dying? Anybody here died before? I tell you how you know. Strength and life flows out. You know when you're bleeding, strength, and, and, and you know it can't stop, right? Because the pellet count is so low. Strength starts to leave. I was looking at myself. Hey God, this cannot be, man. 1992, I'm only how old? Please, I'm only 31 years old. I just started my ministry. I just got married. Don't even have children yet. I said, ah, maybe God, you got a plan. Jesus, I know tonight you're going to visit me. You're going to heal me and then give me the healing power to go to the nations, right? Hallelujah. So I waited, waited, waited. Nothing happened. So I changed my prayer. I said, Jesus, maybe my case is not that serious. Just send an angel. I always believe in angels. So I waited, waited. No angels. So I drifted to sleep. And then I heard this footstep. Doop, 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 doop. Oh, somebody's coming. All white. Ah, angel coming. At last, it was a nurse. So I slept. I don't know how Peter could sleep when he knows the next day he's going to be executed. Anyway, I slept. What can you do, right? There's nothing you can do except trust God. Simply trust Him. Lord, my life is in your hand. Anyway, that night, I had a dream, a very interesting dream. I saw this huge clock, huge clock, and it was at 11.59. And the small second hand was about to tick. And I just knew in that dream, as I look at this clock intently, that when the small second hand touched 12, I'll be totally healed. I cannot explain. That was my experience. So I look intently, counted as it ticks towards 12. The moment it hit 12, I scream and I got out. I said, I'm healed, I'm healed. Then I realized, hey, I'm in a hospital. I have drips and all over the place. Every morning, they will take the blood test. So that morning, they took the blood test as usual. I knew my pellet counts would be normal. And sure enough, when the result came out, I was normal. I was discharged. My dear friend, there's hope. It's not time for you to die. No matter what happened, you will stay. God can do miracle. Just simply trust Him. Let's stand to our feet this morning. All of my days are held in your hand. Come on, the goodness of God. How many know God is good? Not just singing it, but experience it. The goodness of God. Come on, worship Him. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And as you sing this, I want to give it all the call. Maybe you've given her up hope on something. Maybe your dreams are dashed. Maybe you think it's not possible. But with God, all things are possible. I'll ask Pastor Chiu to come. Pastor Abraham Chiu, I mean Pastor Chiu, Dr. Chiu to come and just give the other call. This. So you don't want to miss the miracle. I will open the altar. Even we have to minister until 1 p.m. We we'll minister until 1 p.m. But I don't want you to miss the miracle because we are rushing out for a lunch appointment or because you want to come out to be the traffic jam. Because in the eyes of God, He wants to work a miracle because Jesus is still reigning. Amen. So I'm going to open the altar and people will pray for you and minister to you, not because we pray for you, but because you responded in faith to a hope in your situation, whether it be for your business, whether it be for your healing, whether it be for somebody's healing, your wife, your, 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 your loved one, your, your, your colleague or your parents, or even you pray for your children, or for your career, whatever it is, even for a husband or a wife. Remember the 57-year-old doctor 
Alright, so whatever it is, I'm going to open your altar. You come in faith because faith attracts God. Faith attracts God. How much? Mustard seed. That's all that is needed. I believe that when you come forward, you're demonstrating, whether for upstairs as well, online as well, we're going to open the altar. You come and receive whatever miracle you're hoping for. It will take place. Amen. Come, let's sing this song. The goodness of God. God is a good God. He's a great God. Amen. The altar is open as we sing this song. Amen. God is in the house. You receive your miracle. You receive your miracle. Whatever it may be. Whatever it be. You know and God knows. Those in the balcony as well. It's only a short distance to come down. There are stairs on both sides. You don't have to jump down. There are stairs on both sides. Hallelujah. You have been faithful. Hallelujah. All my life you have been so, so good. God is a good God. Do you believe in or not? Do you believe in or not? That's all there is. Whoa. Come forward. Ushers, can you make sure that you come forward? Let the space in your arm. Just come forward. I love your voice. Just come forward, just big face in a You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. Hallelujah. Whoa. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the oh. good Hallelujah. Let us, let us lift our hands to the Lord. God still performs miracles. You have a difficult person in your family. God can turn him or her around. You have a disease. You have an impossible case. You're believing God for salvation, for breakthrough. God is still on the throne. Just lift your hands. And, and today, don't give up hope. Combine your faith and hope. Father, in the name of Jesus today, Lord, Lord, we know that you are good and your mercies endures forever. You are seated on the throne that you have all power, all authority on earth and in heaven. Every knee, every sickness, every impossible situation must bow their knees and declare that Jesus is Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for today, the breakthrough, the healings, the miracle, that whatever they are believing God, and even for the move of God, the revival in Malaysia, it shall be done. It is done in the realm of the Spirit, and we shall see the manifestation. Lord, in the days ahead, and Lord, good news is coming. We receive that, Lord, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ is coming and Lord we thank you that all of our days are held in your hand Malaysia is held in Jesus hand and God will visit Malaysia God will heal Malaysia God will raise Malaysia and the glory of God shall be seen through our land and what the enemy has meant for evil God will turn it for good in Jesus name to God be the glory Amen Amen Please leave quietly if you leave as ministry goes on the front. All right, meeting is over, but if you need ministry, please come forward. All right, anyone who wants ministry, ministry continues on the front. Okay, just give us time. There will someone will come and pray with you, pray for you. Understand whatever your needs may be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, 
for they shall return to me with their whole heart. This 40 days of fast and prayer, come and prepare our hearts by gathering together at our weekly prayer altars. For further information, visit our website and the NECF devotional booklet that will be available for download to guide you through your fast and prayer season. Together, let's return our hearts to God and come to know Him. We all have that person in our lives, that neighbor we pass by daily, that coworker we see five days a week, those friends we catch up with, people we wish would know and experience the love of Jesus. It takes great faith, with time, effort, vulnerability, and sacrifice to reach out to them. What greater opportunity than exercising your faith at our very own SIBKL Alpha. Now is the time to invite your friends for our upcoming Alpha and introduce the love of Christ to them. Accomplish is a, a community of business owners and professionals. We come together on a regular basis to journey life together and grow together. If you want to move from here to there, I dare you to really look at your comfort zone and think about what is happening in our daily life. The people will see the value that we build, even accepted properly by your partners. Our blended learning journey will give you three experiences. A learning personal to you at your own pace with direct access to the speakers. Interaction with other conference participants in an online community on the social platform in the app. And finally, at our Saturdays together, you will hear from our keynote speaker and interact within your small groups. Come, join us at this True Success Conference today.